Hi there everyone, it's Kalen from Kite, the AI autocomplete for Python, and in this video we'll walk through how to build the game 2048 using Python. I think we all remember back in 2014 when this game ate up hours, days, even weeks of our lives and our productivity. Because it was so simple to play, yet so deeply satisfying to win, 2048 was ridiculously addictive. And now you can learn how to build it from scratch in Python using TKinter for the Graphical User Interface, or GUI. And if you aren't familiar with TKinter, it's the Python binding to the TK toolkit, which is used across many programming languages for building GUIs. When we're done coding, you'll be able to play 2048 just like you did on the mobile app, but you'll have to make moves using arrows on the keyboard rather than swiping a finger. We'll be writing all of our code to run the game in a single file called 2048.py, but we'll also have a supplementary file called colors.py. This will hold all of our constants for the colors that will be displayed on our GUI. A link to the completed project is in the description of this video, so feel free to check that out and follow along. All right, now let's get started. So let's begin by importing TK Enter. And then we'll create a game class that will inherit from the TK Enter frame widget. Game will be where the entire game is run and the GUI is managed. In our constructor, we'll call the frame constructor on self to construct game as a frame widget and we'll call grid to allow us to create our game grid and set the title of the window to 2048. Before starting on the GUI, let's first look at the file colors.py, which I've already written to hold the game's color palette and font selection. I did my best to match each color and the font to the original 2048 game, but you can be the judge of that. So let's get back to our main file and make sure to import colors.py. So now we actually start to make the outline of our GUI, which will be a four x four grid. Let's make a frame called main grid, whose parent is self, and we'll set the background color to grid color from colors.py. We'll set a border of three pixels and make both the width and the height 600. Then let's call grid on it, giving it some padding at the top for our score header by writing pad-y equals 100 comma zero. TKinter's functions tend to have an extensive list of arguments and keywords, so this is a great time to take a look over at the Kite Copilot to get some assistance on what to include in our function calls. Next, let's make a four x four grid and a new function called make GUI. Inside, let's first create a variable called cells That'll be a 2D list holding the information contained in each cell of the grid. Then let's make a nested for loop to append to cells row by row. For each cell, we'll create a cell frame, which will inherit from main grid, and we'll set the background color to empty cell color with the width of 150 and the height of 150. Then we'll call grid on each cell frame with row as i and column as j and we'll add five pixels of padding on each side, which will allow for the grid lines to appear between cells. For each cell, we'll also make a tkinter label widget, which will be used to display the number value of the cell. We'll pass main grid to this and set the background to empty cell color. We'll call each of these cell display and again call grid with row as i and column as j. We'll then create a dictionary called cell data to store the data for these widgets making cell frame the value to the key frame and cell number the value to the key number. We'll then append each cell data to row and each row to cells. Now we have to make our score header. So let's make another frame called score frame. And we'll position this at the center top of the window by calling place with a relx as 0.5, y as 45 for some top padding, and anchor as center to justify it in the center. Then we need to add a label that says score with our defined font. We'll also call grid row equals zero on this label to position it at the top. Now we have to display the actual score. We make another label called score label, setting the text initially to zero and setting the font to score font. Then we just have to call grid row equals one to place this right below the score label. So that's it for making the GUI. Let's just make sure to call it back in the constructor. Let's just run our program real quick to get an idea of what the GUI looks like at this point. To do this, we have to do a couple quick things first though. 
First, we have to call game to run an instance of it. Then we have to go back up to our constructor and call self.main loop so that the GUI window is continuously running. Now we can go to the terminal and launch our GUI. Now let's write a function start game that will create the 4x4 matrix or a 2D list that will hold all the values shown on the board at each turn. We first initialize the matrix with all zeros. Then we have to randomly place two twos into the matrix. So first let's import the random library. Then we'll randomly select a row and column index to insert a two into the matrix. Once we start typing here, we can see that kite suggests the autocompletion ran.ranInt for us. We also have to display this two on the GUI as well, which we do by editing both the cell frame and the cell number. Remember that we store this information in a dictionary, so we'll first index into frame and call configure to set its background color to our specific cell color for two. Then we'll index into number and configure the background color, font color, font, and text to two. We'll do this one more time, ensuring we choose a different cell. At the end of this function, we'll create a variable called score to keep track of the player's score over the course of the game. We'll set this to zero. This will be the initial state of the game, so let's not forget to call start game in the constructor. Before we get into the main functionality of the game, let's take a quick pause so that I can tell you how you can code faster with Kite, the AI coding assistant we're using in this video. Whether you're new to Python or already a pro, you should try out Kite as your autocomplete to reduce your keystrokes and save time programming. Kite is a free plugin for your code editor that uses machine learning to save you keystrokes while you're programming. So if you're using Atom, VS Code, Spider, PyCharm, Sublime, or Vim, Kite will seamlessly integrate into your coding workflow. Kite can complete entire lines of code, and it has a feature called Intelligent Snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with variables defined earlier in your script. The window on the right side of my screen here is also a Kite feature called the Kite Copilot. It automatically shows you relevant Python documentation while you type based on your cursor location. This saves you time from having to Google search for docs. The best part of Kite is that it's free, and you can download it from the link in the description below. Now let's get back to coding 2048. We have already completed the initial setup, so now we'll get to our matrix functions that'll be called during gameplay. There will be four functions that manipulate the 4x4 matrix we created in start game, and they will be called in different combinations and sequences based on the move by the player. Each function will use a nested for loop to change the values and or positions of the values in the matrix. First is stack. Stack will compress all non-zero numbers in the matrix towards one side of the board, eliminating all the gaps of empty cells between them. We'll write our stack function to compress to the left side, and you'll see why we can do this after I explain the other functions. So first, we'll create a new matrix of all zeros. Then in our nested for loop, for each row in our matrix, we're going to keep track of the number of cells containing a non-zero number in a variable called fill position. If the value in the cell is non-zero, we set the value in the new matrix at i fill position to the value in self.matrix at i comma j. Then we'll increment the fill position by one. After our for loop, we'll just set self.matrix to new matrix. The next function is combine, which adds together all horizontally adjacent non-zero numbers of the same value in the matrix and merges them to the left position. GUI speaking, this is the step when two tiles of the same value, say 4, merge together and collapse in one tile of their sum, or 8. So in this nested for loop, we're only looping until column 2, so we can index with j plus 1. We'll then be checking if the value at i, j, in the matrix is not 0 and is equal to the value at i, comma j plus 1. If so, we multiply the value at i, j by 2, and then make the value at i, j plus 1, 0. Combine will also be the function where we update our score by adding the newly combined value to self.score. Next, we'll implement the reverse method, which will reverse the order of each row in the matrix. We'll start by creating a new matrix that will begin as an empty list. Then, in our outer for loop, we'll make sure to append an empty list to new matrix for each row. 
In our inner for loop, we'll append to that empty list the value in our matrix at the i 3 minus j position so that the order of the values are reversed. Then after the nested for loop, we set self.matrix to new matrix. The last matrix function is transpose, which will flip the matrix over its diagonal. For this, we once again create a new matrix of all zeros. Then in our nested for loop, we set every value at i, j in new matrix with the value at j, i in the current matrix. Then we'll set self.matrix to new matrix. Now that we've written all our functions to manipulate the matrix when the player makes a move, we have to write a function that will randomly add a new tile to the matrix after each move. This tile can either be a two tile or a four tile. Let's call this function add new tile. We'll take the exact same approach to this as we did in start game when we added two twos randomly to the matrix. So let's just copy and paste that code into this function. Now we just have to alter this code to randomly select either a two or a four to fill the matrix at row column. For this, we just replace the two with random not choice on the list two, four. Now we need a function called update GUI that will update the GUI to correspond to the newly manipulated matrix. We once again have a nested for loop, and in this, we check which cells have a zero value. For those that do, we can figure that cell to display the empty cell color and no text. Otherwise, we can figure that cell to show the background color specified in cell colors, the font color specified in cell number colors, and the font type specified in cell number fonts, as well as set the text in that cell to the appropriate value. Here, we also have to update the score display, so we'll call configure on score label with text as self.score. We then have to call the tkinter frame member function update idle tasks to immediately update the widget displays. So now we're done with the different pieces and we just have to put them together for each move that the player makes. Left, right, up, and down. This is the fun part, visualizing how each of these moves would be played out using code will first bind each of the arrow keys to a specific function corresponding to that arrow. Let's scroll back up to our constructor and inside call self.master.bind on each of the arrow keys and corresponding functions called by the same name. Now we define these functions which each consist of a sequence of different combinations of the matrix manipulation functions. If you remember from earlier, I said that we were writing the stack function to compress the left side. Our combined function also looks horizontally for adjacent cells with the same number value, and then merges them to the cell more left of the two. We did this because we have the reverse and the transpose functions, which can orient our matrix so that each move can be dealt with as the left move, and then orient it back to how it should be. If that was slightly confusing, it'll make more sense once we start coding. So as I said, the left move is the most straightforward. It's a concise sequence of matrix manipulation functions. We first call stack to compress the non-zero numbers to the left side of the matrix. Then we call combine to combine the horizontally adjacent like numbers. Then we call stack again to eliminate the newly created zeroed cells from the combined function. And that's it for the matrix manipulation functions. Now we just have to call add new tile and update GUI, which we do in each of these four functions. Now on to write. So to transform a right swipe into a left swipe, we just need to reverse our matrix. Then we can call stack, then combine, then stack again, just as we did for the left function. Then we just need to call reverse again to structure the matrix back into its original orientation. And of course, we'll need to call add new tile and update GUI here as well. 
For up, we'll transpose the matrix to make it work like the left move. Then of course, stack, combine, stack, then transpose again. And add new tile and update GUI. Last, we have down. For this move, we have to transpose and reverse the matrix. So a leftward movement can have a downward effect. When we transpose the matrix, it'll work like the right move. So then we just have to reverse the matrix to make it work like the left move. I think by now you know the pattern and can expect what comes next here. And now we have a playable game. So we just have to add functionality to check whether the game is over, either a win or a loss. So let's write a function called game over, which we call after every turn, and we first check whether the player won, which would mean that 2048 is on the board. For this, we use the built-in function any, saying whether any 2048 in row for row in self.matrix. If so, we'll create a new frame called game over frame, whose parent will be main grid, and let's give it a border width of two. Then we have to place game over frame onto main grid, and we'll set rel x and rel y to 0.5, which will position it in the middle. Then to align this frame at the center, we say anchor equals center. The last step is to add a label to game over frame, on which we'll write, you win. And we'll set the background color, font color, and font to our specified colors. We also have to call pack on this to display it on game over frame. Now we have to check if the player has lost the game, which means that every square on the board is occupied and there are no possible moves left. For this, we first have to check that there are no zeros left in the matrix, which we can also use any for. Then to check whether legal moves remain, we write a couple functions, one to check horizontal moves and one to check vertical moves. So above game over, we create a function horizontal move exists. In this, we'll make a nested for loop, which checks whether any values in our matrix at ij equals the value at ij plus one. If so, we can return true. Otherwise, we turn false at the end of the function. Then we can write vertical move exists, which will pretty much be the same, except that we're checking if the value at ij equals the value at i plus one j. Now let's go back down to our conditional, where we continue by saying and not self.horizontal move exists and not self.vertical move exists. Then inside we can write the same code we wrote up above for the win, except change the text to game over and the background to our loser background. We're done with this function, so let's just call it in each of left, right, up, and down. Now, oh, whoops, it looks like we forgot one of these parentheses here. Finishing up, we just need a main function to create an instance of our game to run. Then we just need to add this code fragment here so the game runs by running our script in the command line. And now we're finished. Let's run our program and play 2048. Today we learned how to build 2048 with Python. I hope you enjoyed following along with this tutorial, and now you can relapse into your addiction with this game. And if you're feeling ambitious, you can even take what you learned today and create a game of your own. Please share it in the comments below. In our next video, we'll show you how you can build an AI that can play 2048, and indeed play it better than most human players. We'll put that link in the description below once it's ready. For other great coding content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell. Also make sure to download Kite to help you code faster and smarter. Thanks for watching and happy gaming.